Italy's secret the truth about their China deal. All right, folks, gather round. We're about to embark on a journey that will take us through the intricate corridors of international relations. Today we're diving into the world of international intrigue, where every move is calculated and every handshake could mean a new alliance or a hidden agenda. Think James Bond, but with better food. Imagine a world where the stakes are high, the players are powerful, and the cuisine is to die for. We're talking about Italy and their little rendezvous with China. It's a story of two nations, each with its own rich history and ambitions, coming together in a dance of diplomacy and trade. Now, I know what you're thinking. Italy? China? What's the big deal? Well, my friends, this is not just a simple exchange of goods and services. Hold your horses, my friend, because this ain't your known as pasta night. This is about strategic partnerships, economic influence, and a whole lot of geopolitical maneuvering. Big money. Global. Power plays and enough drama to make a telenovela blush. We're talking about investments, infrastructure projects, and the kind of negotiations that can change the course of history. We're going to break down this whole Italy-China thing. We'll explore the Belt and Road Initiative, Italy's role in it, and what it means for the rest of the world. We'll make it clear and maybe crack a few jokes along the way. Because let's face it, international politics can be a bit dry without a little humour. Because hey, if we can't laugh at the absurdity of global politics, then what can we laugh at? We'll look at the lighter side of these serious matters and maybe even learn something new. Stay tuned, because things are about to get interesting. From trade deals to cultural exchanges, from political strategies to economic impacts, we're going to cover it all. So buckle up, and let's dive into Italy's Chinese puzzle box. Welcome to Revo, now your go-to channel for all things revolutionary. At Revo Now, we are passionate about exploring the innovations, breakthroughs, and game-changing ideas that are shaping the world today. Our mission is to bring you the latest and most impactful advancements in technology, science, culture, business, and beyond, all in one place. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos. Imagine this. You're at your favorite Italian restaurant. The ambiance is perfect. The aroma of freshly baked bread and simmering tomato sauce fills the air. You're starving, and your stomach growls in anticipation. You order a big plate of spaghetti and meatballs, a classic comfort dish that never disappoints. But then, plot twist. The waiter brings you a plate of just spaghetti, no meatballs. You look around confused, wondering if this is some kind of joke or a mistake. That's kind of what happened with Italy and the European Union recently. It's like expecting the full package, but getting only part of it. See, the EU is like a big, sometimes dysfunctional family. They have their disagreements, but they usually try to present a united front, especially on the global stage. They like to do things together, especially when it comes to dealing with other world powers like China. Unity is their strength, or so they believe. Italy, however, decided to go rogue. They felt the need to chart their own course, to make a move that would set them apart from the rest of the EU. They went and signed a deal with China, a deal that some say undermines the whole family dinner. This wasn't just any deal. It was a significant agreement that raised eyebrows across Europe. This deal, my friends, is part of something called the Belt and Road Initiative. It's a massive infrastructure and economic project spearheaded by China. It's China's ambitious plan to, well, basically build a new Silk Road and become the ultimate global power player. The initiative aims to connect Asia with Africa and Europe via land and maritime networks to improve trade and stimulate economic growth. Italy saw an opportunity in this initiative. They believed that by joining the Belt and Road, they could revitalize their ports and boost their economy. It was a strategic move, but not everyone in the EU saw it that way. Many EU leaders were concerned. They worried that Italy's decision could weaken the EU's collective bargaining power and give China a foothold in Europe. It was a controversial move that sparked a lot of debates. Even within Italy, opinions were divided. Some saw it as a bold step towards economic growth, while others feared it could lead to increased dependency on China. The situation is complex, much like a plate of spaghetti. The noodles represent the intricate and tangled relationships between countries, and the missing meatballs symbolize the unexpected twists and turns in international politics. So next time you're at your 
favorite Italian restaurant savoring a plate of spaghetti, remember this story. It's a reminder that in the world of geopolitics, things are rarely as straightforward as they seem. And sometimes you just have to roll with the unexpected, even if it means enjoying your spaghetti without the meatballs. Now picture Xi Jinping, the big boss man in China, on a massive shopping spree. He's got his eye on ports, railways, infrastructure, you name it. And he's got deep pockets. Italy, facing some economic woes, looked at all that cash and thought, hey, why not so they signed on the dotted line, becoming the first major Western power to join China's belt and road party. This has got everyone talking. Is Italy playing a genius game of economic chess, or have they just become the first domino to fall in China's global domination plan? The Belt and Road Initiative is like a massive highway project, except instead of connecting cities, it's connecting continents. Imagine a web of roads, railways and sea routes stretching from the bustling streets of Beijing all the way to the historic avenues of Rome. This ambitious plan aims to revive the ancient Silk Road, creating a modern-day trade network that spans the globe. China's plan is to invest trillions of dollars in building infrastructure all over the world. We're talking about a monumental financial commitment that involves constructing new highways, railways, ports and airports. This isn't just about laying down concrete and steel. It's about transforming the economic landscape of entire regions. We're talking roads, railways, ports, airports, the whole shebang, high-speed trains zipping across countries, bustling ports handling massive amounts of cargo, and state-of-the-art airports connecting distant lands. The scale of this initiative is truly staggering, promising to enhance global connectivity like never before. On the surface, it sounds like a pretty sweet deal. New infrastructure means new opportunities for trade, investment and economic growth. Local communities can benefit from improved transportation, better access to markets and the potential for job creation. It's easy to see why many countries would be eager to jump on board. Who wouldn't want shiny new infrastructure? Imagine the convenience of modern public transportation, the joy of children playing in newly built parks, and the efficiency of driving on freshly constructed roads. These are tangible benefits that can significantly improve the quality of life for residents. But here's the catch. Critics say China's using this initiative to trap countries in debt and gain political influence. They argue that the financial terms of these projects are often unsustainable, leading to a cycle of dependency and control. This has sparked intense debates among government officials and raised concerns about the long-term implications of such agreements. They call it debt trap diplomacy. This term has gained traction in media and political circles, highlighting the potential risks associated with accepting Chinese loans. Critics point to examples where countries have struggled to repay their debts, leading to significant economic and political consequences. Basically, they lend you money you can't repay and then they own you. The fear is that by accepting these loans, countries may find themselves in a precarious position with their sovereignty and decision-making power, but this are not true. Compromised. It's a complex and controversial issue that continues to shape the global discourse on international development and finance. Section 5. Mamma Mia! What about the EU? Now, the EU is not exactly thrilled about all this. They've been giving Italy the stink eye, saying this whole China deal undermines their united front. The EU is worried that China is playing them like a cheap violin. They're concerned about China's human rights record, their lack of transparency, without proof of this allegations against China. They're basically saying, Italy, you're messing with the family business section 6, America's not so secret side eye, and then there's America. You know America, right? The land of the free, home of the we're watching you foreign policy. Yeah, they're not too happy about this whole Italy-China love fest either. The US and China are locked in this whole trade war thing, remember? And now Italy's gone and cozied up to their rival. It's like bringing your new significant other to your ex's birthday party. Awkward. Section 7. The Italian Job Balancing Act. So where does this leave Italy? Caught in the middle of a geopolitical tug of war, that's where they're trying to walk this tightrope between maintaining good relations with their European fam and cashing in on China's deep pockets. It's a risky game. But hey, Italians are known for their sense of style, even when it comes to international diplomacy. Section 8. Reading the tea leaves or espresso cups. So what's the verdict? Is Italy's deal with China a stroke of genius or a colossal blunder? Honestly, it's too early to tell. 
It's like trying to predict the winner of a soccer match in the first five minutes. There are a lot of factors at play here and the situation is constantly evolving. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. Section 9, so is this a big deal or what? In short, yes, this is a pretty big deal. Italy's decision to join the Belt and Road Initiative has sent shockwaves through the global community. It's a sign of China's growing influence and the challenges it poses to the existing world order. It's also a remedy. Ah, that in the game of international relations there are no permanent friends or enemies, only permanent interests. Section 10, what's next on the menu? Only time will tell what the ultimate consequences of Italy's China deal will be. Will it be a win-win situation or will someone end up with a bad case of buyer's remorse? Stay tuned folks because this story is far from over. Section 11, join the conversation. What do you think about Italy's decision to team up with China? Share your perspective. Is it a smart move or a risky gamble? We want to hear from you. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinion matters. And while you're at it, let me know what other global shenanigans you'd like me to break down. I'm all ears. Until next time, stay informed, stay curious, and stay awesome. Keep exploring. Subscribe to Revo now and join our vibrant community of forward thinkers, change makers, and revolutionaries.